And now it's time for us to discuss more of the headlines and simple keywords with Adam joining us via Zoom. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Lena. Happy Monday. I'm back. <laughs> well rested, I assume. <laughs> a little bit, a bit of a holiday hangover, but uh, <laughs> I'll get over it. <laughs> it's funny because sometimes I do. I agree with you. No matter how close, how far, because you really didn't travel that far for that long. No, but <laughs> <laughs> you come back and you're thinking, "Ooh, I need a vacation for my vacation." <laughs> it all depends on what you do, rather uh, than the distance, right? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And you're well traveled. Jam packed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, Adam. Let's jump into our keyword news portion of the day. We're going to try to clarify these headlines for our listeners. And this is our first pick of the day. Government questioning. The National Assembly will start grilling the government from today on a wide range of issues. Clashes are widely expected between the rival parties. What can we expect on them? Yeah, so these are kind of occasions where it's not really much about the actual questioning of the government officials themselves. It's more about kind of each party trying to push their own agenda through. Sure. <laughs> and, try, and lawmakers basically trying to make a name for themselves, if you will. Uh, and they will start with the fields of politics, uh, diplomacy, unification and security. And to, in uh, today's session, when it kicks off, the ruling and opposition parties are expected to clash uh, specifically over the discharge of contaminated water from Japan's Fukushima nuclear power plant. Uh, the Democratic Party is expected to take issue with the safety of the water and whether to resume imports of agricultural uh, and seafood products from uh, Fukushima. They'll also likely take issue with what they think is the opaqueness of the government's recent inspection team uh, to the plant. And the PPP, the People Power Party, is expected to counter by saying that the Democratic Party is spreading unfounded rumors and that it is causing damage to fishermen. Now, rival parties are expected to lock horns also over the results of President Yoon's series of recent summits. Uh, this includes the Korea-Japan summit in March, the state visit to the United States in April, as well as the G7 summit in May, the sidelines of which um, Korea had uh, many sideline summits as well, uh, apart from the gathering itself. Now, the ruling party plans to highlight the diplomatic achievements by emphasizing that President Yoon restored Korean-Japan shuttle diplomacy and solidified uh, trilateral cooperation between Korea, the US and Japan. The Democratic Party is expected to criticize the overall diplomacy with Japan, such as the government's solution to forced labor, a very controversial mm. um, issue. Uh, that third party fund as well will also be uh, a contentious point that will be raised. It also plans to point out the lack of economic achievements at the Korea-US summit. Uh, in addition, rival parties are expected to clash over the controversy surrounding uh, the Chinese ambassador to Korea, Xing Hai Ming, who recently caused a stir by revealing his open dissatisfaction uh, with the Korean government at a dinner party with the DP leader, Lee Jae-myung, something we'll be getting on to uh, in a bit more detail later on. Uh, the PPP is likely to go on the offensive with the National Election Commission's a kind of nepotism scandal and the controversy over illegal assembly and rallies by the Korean uh, labor unions. Of course, the government and these labor unions, umbrella labor unions mm -hmm. in particular, uh, they've been um, in a bit of a, a, a tensions are high between the two sides and the ruling party is obviously going to be on the side of the government and uh, it will be definitely locking horns with the opposition party over mm. that as well. And some of the points you've made, it doesn't seem like there are quick fixes, uh, but nonetheless, we'll try to keep our listeners in the loop as we get more progress uh, from this meeting. Let's move on to our second keyword of the day. God still up. So the launch window uh, reported to the IMO uh, to put a North Korean satellite into orbit has passed. But South Korea says it's not letting its guard down because, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Kim Yo-jong was quick to say that they, will, they won't reward the next window to the IMO and launch as they wish. Yeah, exactly. So uh, they did give a date, but that was kind of an official notification, <laughs> if you will. But North Korea, of course, as we know, are known to... Uh, you know, uh, a loose cannon. yeah, a bit of a loose cannon, conduct provocations, uh, unscheduled and unannounced. And so that's why uh, Seoul is still on uh, guard. Now, the window itself was actually May 31st. Mm. 
uh, uh, to June 11th. And that was actually set by North Korea. But of course, it is the 12th today. So it has passed. The country uh, fired the actual rocket, the military satellite, it claimed, on the first day of the window. But of course, that launch ended in failure. Uh, South Korea is still on high alert, as are the US and Japan. A senior presidential official told Yonhap News that North Korea can launch a long-range ballistic missile at any time without prior notice. They have the capabilities of doing so. Uh, the official added that South Korea and the U.S. are continuing surveillance activity. And the official also said that Seoul will go ahead with a sharing of missile warning information uh, between South Korea, U the U.S. Uh, and Japan as planned as well. Now, another official also said nothing has changed, even though the launch window uh, has passed. Meanwhile... Uh, 38 North reports that a North Korean Shinpo-class submarine capable of launching uh, SLBMs has recently been mo moved to a uh, dry dock, according to commercial satellite imagery. Um, the uh, monitoring website said the purpose is unclear, but may be related to routine hull maintenance, uh, minor repairs, or some kind of modification. Now, the Shinpo-class SSB is normally berthed in the secure boat basin uh, beneath an awning which largely conceals the submarine's presence. Uh, it was last observed in the dry dock in December 2021 after an at-sea launch of an SLBM. Now, it was unclear what work was conducted on the submarine at that time as well, whether routine maintenance or post-launch um, repairs, but it did result in a launch of a submarine, uh, submarine launch ballistic missile. Mm. Whether that will happen this time around as well, um, of course, uh, authorities will be taking a close look at that. All right, let's turn to the economy section. Uh, could we bet on a rosy half of the year? Uh, well, the remaining half of the year ahead. Uh, let's move on to our third keyword of the day. Economic rebound. So the Korea Development Institute has hinted that the economy may soon rebound in the second half of the year after bottoming out in the first half. I don't know at this point. I'm thinking fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Uh, is there light at the end of the tunnel? It's all a bit too soon, but uh, the state-run think tank certainly is a bit more rosy than okay. it was in the past. Um, and it noted in its monthly report that the economy has been underperforming, primarily in the manufacturing sector. However, uh, it did note that there are increasing indicators suggesting an economic low point. This is a bit more of an optimistic outlook compared to last month's an uh, analysis. Uh, back then, the KDI suggested that the sharp decline has somewhat subsided, in their words, thanks to a rebound uh, in domestic demand. So it seems like their wording is a bit more optimistic. Uh, in its recent assessment, the KDI pointed out that despite the overall decrease in exports, the condition of the economy uh, has not actually worsened. It said the decline in chip production and exports to China have improved, for example. Uh, the Institute also assessed consumer sentiment and inflation uh, to be in a good state. The service industry, meanwhile, continued its favorable trend laid, uh, led by face-to-face uh, -face businesses uh, at the forefront. Of course, a lot of pandemic-related restrictions are pretty much all gone now, hence why those uh, services and sectors are kind of picking up again, uh, travel being another one. Mm -hmm. um, now, the KDI also noted that despite the increase in electricity, and gas prices, the rise in consumer prices is stabilizing gradually due to falling import prices and other base effects. Still, the think tank noted that the core inflation rate, which represents the fundamental price tre uh, trend, excluding food and energy, has continued to hover around 4%. So still uh, quite high, but still easing, though, recently. Mm. Now, the positive outlook aligns with the government's expectations that the uh, economic situation will improve uh, in the state uh, second half of this year. It is a state-run think tank, so I think the two will go kind of hand-in-hand in, hand in their assessments, but uh, there you have it. Some maybe positive signs <laughs> and optimism uh, sure. regarding the economy, but of course, do take all of this with a grain of salt. You never know, nothing is for sure until the actual time comes. Uh, so we'll have to just uh, keep watch, I guess. That's right, that's why we do this daily, right? Yeah, Let's <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is our fourth keyword of the day. Arms money. 
So in discussing South Korea's arms exports, uh, exports of Korean-made fighter jets, tanks, and artillery to Poland over the past year have topped 600 billion won. This is creating a much-needed source of income for the country's rapidly deteriorating trade balance. Korea eyes to expand its market to also the Czech Republic. That's right. Uh, certainly is contributing to kind of a, tr- a sort of a trade surplus. Uh, uh, Korea has been experiencing a trade deficit for a long time now. So mm. this is a kind of a bright sign, hopefully. Now, data from the Korea International Trade Association, or key to know for short, uh, show that Korea's weapons exports to Poland stood at $255 million in the first four months of this year. It already exceeded last year's exports of $201 million of tanks and other artillery. These include the FA-50 light attack fighter jets, the K-2 battle tanks and K-9 um, self-propelled howitzers. Now, the April data followed a Korea-Poland agreement whereby Warsaw decided to buy up to 20 trillion won worth of Korean-made weapons. The deal was done last July, and at that time, the industry estimated that the defense deal would generate 19.5 trillion won um, in income for the country. But the sum total will rise to 30 trillion won over the next 10 years, as lifted by the exports of related manufactured goods. Now, Korea's export total to Poland in the first four months of the year stood at just over $3 billion. That's up about 34.5% uh, from the year before. Uh, Korea registered a trade surplus of $2.7 billion with Poland, and the country has become Korea's fifth source of trade income this year after the US, Vietnam, Uh, Hong Kong and India. Now, you did mention the Czech Republic, and in that country, which is seeking to replace its uh, aging main battle tanks, interest in South Korea's K2 Black Panther uh, tank, considered a kind of a luxury weapon, is growing. Mm -hmm. Now, according to Kotra, the Czech Defense Ministry is planning to uh, purchase 50 to 70 new tanks in 2027 and 2030 to bolster um, its forces. So, more promising signs that defense exports of Korea are going to contribute largely to the economy as well. It's expanding to uh, other countries, and we'll have to see if there are any other deals that are made down the line. And on to our final keyword of the day. Tensions rise. So tensions between Korea and China are rising as Beijing called in Seoul's ambassador to lodge a complaint after the Chinese ambassador to was summoned over remarks warning Seoul against betting against Beijing. What's the latest, Adam? Yeah, it's all a bit confusing, but basically tit for tat, uh, yeah. diplomatic spats, uh, calling in each other's ambassadors to lodge complaints about criticisms of each other's governments. And uh, it does come at a time when tensions between the two countries are already kind of at a boiling point uh, at the moment. Now, Beijing called in Tong Jeho on Saturday to express serious concerns over what it called an unfair response that South Korea showed about a meeting uh, between the Chinese ambassador, Xing Hai Ming, and the DP leader, Yi Jae-myung. Now, during that meeting last mm. Thursday, Xing said that it is a wrong bet to believe that China will lose in the rivalry with the United States. He also warned that those betting on China's defeat will certainly regret it later. Uh, on Friday, Seoul called in Singh and sternly warned against the envoy's unreasonable and provocative uh, remarks. Now, Korea's foreign ministry also warned Singh's remarks could be seen as interference in South Korea's domestic politics. And during Saturday's meeting, the Chinese assistant foreign minister Nong Rong explained Beijing's stance on relations with Korea and said it is part of Singh's duties to meet with people from various circles of the host nation, with the purpose of promoting understanding and facilitating cooperation. Uh, The official also asked Korea to reflect on where the problem lies in relations between the two countries. Mm -hmm. And he also urged Seoul to respect the spirits of the joint statement adopted when the two countries established diplomatic relations and work with Beijing for a healthy and stable development of relations as well. Now, in Korea, the vice minister called in China's ambassador, but in China... It was noteworthy that an assistant foreign minister who is actually one level lower than the counterpart of the vice minister called in the Korean ambassador. So it is unclear at this point whether that uh, that was due to kind of scheduled conflicts of China's vice foreign minister 
or whether China was trying to convey some kind of message to mm. the Korean side by, uh, you know, lowering the level um, of protocol, if you will. But of mm. course, um, you'll have to see what other repercussions and consequences all this tip for tat diplomatic spats uh, result in. Thank you very much, Adam, for today's coverage. Get some rest and I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm already well rested, but I'll certainly get some more. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow. You know, the post-vacation blues, if you'll see you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.